Well, the thing that brought me to looking at omega-3 oils for traumatic brain injury was sort of a combination of events. I was stationed at Walter Reed Military Medical Center in Bethesda, Maryland, teaching at the medical school, the military's medical school there. And I just sort of saw some things that kind of put two and two and two together and came up with an odd number. And uh, went, to, um, went to the head of research for the Defense Veteran Brain Injury Center and asked the question, is anybody looking at the use of omega-3 fatty acids to help our soldiers recover from traumatic brain injury? And the answer was, no, why don't you? And <laughs> I made every excuse because, you know, it's not my field. I'm not a neurologist or a neurosurgeon or a biochemist. And he said, but you're the only one asking the question. And so that was a career changer for me. As far as using omega-3s for brain injury and all brain injuries, so I've dealt with people that have had strokes, for example, anoxic injury. Somebody has a heart attack and doesn't get blood flow to their brain for minutes or, you know, and, or through CPR, as well as traumatic brain injury of all spectrum, from severe to your typical weekend sports concussion. One of the biggest issues that I've dealt with over the last dozen years talking about omega-3s, traumatic brain injury, concussions, is getting I'm an MD, I'm an allopathic doctor, as traditionally trained as any doctor out there. And I get a lot of skepticism, a lot of pushback from other doctors, my, my fellow colleagues, that it's just fish oil, that can't really help, or you're gonna hurt a patient. More, uh, the ones that really hurt the most is when you've got a, 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 I've got a parent reaching out to me that their kid was in a car accident and the doctors are telling them there's nothing we can do there's nothing more we can do you should pull the plug or you know let let your child die can you imagine telling that to a parent and the parents out of desperation wanting to do anything and everything they can will have reached out to me and there's dozens if not hundreds by this time and I, you got nothing else to lose. Time may heal their brain, but omega-3s can help speed that process. And so I always like to point out one story, um, and I call it the story of Bobby. Bobby was a typical 18-year-old teenager who was doing stupid things like 18-year-old uh, high school seniors do when the parents were out of town. He had the family car and he's running around high speeds, got a speeding ticket, and then about a half hour after that, still didn't learn his lesson, bad car accident. Took him an hour and a half to extract Bobby out of the car, fly him to the nearest trauma center. Uh, the parents who were out of town get called, your son, there's you know been a bad car accident, there's no hope. You should just let us pull the plug. And the parents, you know, of course, rush back home and um, and they prayed, they did everything that they, they could, and they eventually reached out to me, and a week later, Bobby still hadn't died, and they reached out to me, and they said, is there anything we could do? You know, do you think omega-3s might help? And so I talked to the neurosurgeon, and in that case, the neurosurgeon was open to it. That's the exception, and that's what we have to change. Bobby went to his high school graduation three months later and has gone on to move out of the house, have an independent life now years later. But that neurosurgeon, she was absolutely the exception. So I get this pushback principally through parents that the doctors won't let me do it. It might hurt my child. I'm like, well, but they're telling you to pull the plug. So what's the harm here? And I don't know how we can overcome that. One of the questions everybody wants to ask is how much do I take? So I take 3,000 milligrams every single day. My wife, my kids do. Uh, I'm basically a, a doctor that focuses on helping people recover from traumatic brain injury and concussions. And I allowed my son to play football in high school. And he was a starting star running back, uh, leading rusher his last two years of, of uh, high school. And in his junior year in the spring, he switched over and started picking up rugby. So now he's off to college playing rugby, a division one level rugby, but he doesn't leave the breakfast table without taking 3000 milligrams every single day.